Hi, Daniel 140 here from Regal Technologies, and today we will be continuing to build, debug, and analyze our remote control robot. Today we will be installing the remote control camera onto our robot. To do this, we will need to determine how the stepper motors are controlled by the robot itself, and once we have done this, we will then be able to recreate these signals to determine how to orient the motors into the camera arm. To determine what direction the stepper motor needs to be placed into the camera arm, we first need to determine what the controller board is sending to them based on the direction that I enter into my phone, which I've already connected to the robot's Wi-Fi. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect our probe itself to the controller board and to the pins that control the stepper motor. The first set of pins here controls the horizontal controls, and then the second step controls our vertical. And I know this based off the robot schematics. And what we'll see now on our oscilloscope display is we'll see a pulse being sent by the robot to what it believes is the stepper motor. And since this is the horizontal controls, um, I believe if I say move the controls to the right, it'll get larger. And if I move the controls to the left, it'll get smaller. And just to get a little bit more information about these pulses, I'm going to go into our measurement menu, and I'm going to add both a period measure, a positive pulse width, which this is just measuring the pulse width itself, and then I'm going to measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage just so we have our amplitude of the signal. And as I move the signal to the right at its maximum, we'll see it has a period of 20 milliseconds. And as I move it then to its minimum, it's maintaining the period. So I know right now it's only affecting the period's duty cycle, at least the robot is. Then to get measurements of the pulse width at the two maximum points, at its narrowest, I can see it's at 550 microseconds. And at its widest, we're looking at 2.4 milliseconds. So that's sort of our range between its, app, its left and right point. Now, what I want to do is I want to see what the signal looks like in the vertical controls. And to do this, I'm going to move our probe over just one set to the vertical control pins, which, as I said before, I know based off the robot schematics. And what we'll see here is the same pit pulse, and it looks like our period is about the same, but I'm not going to know for certain until I adjust our signal around. So as I move the signal down, it's getting narrower, and as I move it up, it's getting wider. And it looks like it's maintaining the same period. So when it's down, it's at its narrowest, which is also 550 mic microseconds and then at its widest at 2.4 milliseconds. So it's maintaining the same widths both in its minimum and maximum state, and I now know that when the signal is now pointed up, it's at its largest, and when it's down, it's at smallest, and when it's all the way to the left, it's at smallest, and when it's all the way to the right, it's at its largest. So now I know the orientation, at least what the controller is sending to the stepper motors themselves. And what I want to do is I want to recreate the signal now with our waveform generator. So to make sure I'm going to recreate the same signal, I want to go into our reference here. I want to save a reference at its widest point. And then I want to go into our other reference. I want to go and save another reference once that's narrowest. So I have two comparison points. I'm going to save these. And then we're going to offset them just so we can see them. Move this one up and they'll move the actual signal itself down. And what we'll see is in green we're at our narrowest, orange we're at our widest, and then yellow is our true signal. So now we have our two comparison points to view on our waveform generator. Due to the battery capacity of our robot and with the ease of use, I've elected to go with our waveform generator to recreate these signals, just because it'll allow us to create a repeatable signal over and over again that we can readily change. So to create this signal, I'm going to first go into our pulse menu, and then with that I'm going to change it to period. I'm going to set our period to be the 20.23 millisecond period that we had before. I'm going to set our amplitude to be 5.6 volts, just like what we were measuring before, and then our offset, since this is going from 0 to 5.6 volts, I'm going to set that to be 2.8 volts as well. And then I'm going to go down here 
and we'll see our duty cycle. I'm going to change that to our width, and this will change the width of our signal. So what we saw before is we started with a width of, at its narrowest, at 550 microseconds. We'll go ahead and set that. At this point, I'm going to output the signal. And then, just to keep all the same connectors and everything, I'm going to connect our probe and our alligator clip here, which we'll be testing the stepper motors on later. I'm just going to connect those right to our um, oscilloscope. And what we'll see is on our oscilloscope, we've got the same signal now being displayed. And just to overlap this, this should be our narrowest pulse. I'm going to overlap that now with our green reference. And what we'll see here is we've got it basically so it's creating the same signal. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now move it just so we can recreate our widest point, which was over our orange signal. I'm going to move that here. And I'm going to go into our width. I'm just going to increase this, just like how we'll increase it when we're changing the stepper motor direction, until we've got it overlapped. So now we're overlapping the same. And we'll see we're basically producing the same width at our widest point as what we are capturing with our oscilloscope. So with the two references in our signal, I can now say we're going to be creating the same signal out of our waveform generator as the robot was sending to the stepper motor. So with that and a power supply, I should be able to create the same signal going to the stepper motor that the robot will be cre creating, just we have a controlled environment for when we're testing both the left and right controls along with our vertical and horizontal controls just so we can get the right position that the stepper motors need to be placed in to the camera arm itself. Since we've already confirmed that the signal being produced from our waveform generator is the same as what's being produced from our robot with our oscilloscope, I've now connected our waveform generator and our power supply to our stepper motor. Both of them are sharing the one ground here, and then our power supply is just powering our stepper motor over here, and then our waveform generator is connected here to our main control line. Then I've got our oscilloscope probe connected here just so we can still view the signal on our oscilloscope itself. And what we'll see here is as I increase or increase and then decrease our width size, we'll see our stepper motor start to rotate around. And what we'll see is we are now all the way to what is the largest side of our signal. So for our arm itself, in relation to the controls, that's going to be all the way up or all the way to the right. And then as I turn this down, we'll see the stepper motor also go through. And now that it's set all the way at its for the smallest position, this is going to be all the way left and all the way down in our um, rem our remote sort of sense. So now we know what sort of orientation to place this into the camera arm itself. Now to confirm our results that we did before about the stepper motors, I have now placed it all and I believe that I should be able to easily control the robot. So currently I'm having it turn left and now I'm going to have it turn right and then go down and then up. So we can now say we have put the camera on correctly and it's all mounted correctly for us to remotely control it.